Cool. So you released your debut album, Fimble Winter Prophecy, at the end of 2021, like December the 27th? Yes, yes, Riz. Hi. <laughs> we started to, to record in the album in 2020, but the COVID-19, oh no, it's only mm. all the recording, and we in December 27th, after the end concert of us here in Panama, we sell the album to the stores and to the people. Yeah. And alongside COVID, obviously, because that was one of the main issues the world was facing over the past two and a half years. How has that and other challenges impacted the album creation? Oof. It's hard, but when the COVID comes, we we can re reunite it and stay good like bands. All is in calls, video calls, and messages. Uh, it's it is very hard to to rehearse for the band. And in this way, we try to be connected with the people, with the fans, with everything. But the COVID destroy all and we stop the recording and we stop everything yeah so about some of the uh, restrictions that you had in place were there no mixing amongst other people you had to wear masks what were the um restrictions that the panamanian government put in place well uh, it were very restricted because all the commerce uh, were closed and the music was not an exception. But we tried to, to take advantage of that time to, to compose new songs. But like you said, uh, there were many restrictions. We got to use masks. We got only one hour per day to, to get outside, to buy some groceries, stuff. Um, there was a gender thing. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday were the woman. Um, Tuesday and Thursday, the men. So it was very hard. In fact, recording was very hard. So we will. We are continuing uh, recording. We are working in our third album. We we record Fossey Green. It's the first song of our third album. And well, I think that just answered your question. You say you are only allowed out at one hour, one hour at a time. Yes, one hour. Was there any curfews? Was you not allowed after a certain time during the day, for example? What? Can you repeat it? Was there like a curfew put in place? So, for example, was you not at, allowed to be outside after 9 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night? Oh, 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 I, I get it. Um, at first, I think it was at 7 o'clock. Everybody had to be in home because if you weren't at home, you get caught by the cops. That's crazy. Yeah. And well, uh, I heard they they are thinking of uh, come back to that that uh, that method, like close everything at eleven o'clock. But I I wish uh, they don't. <laughs> How did the people react to these measures being put in place? Did, was it sort of they accepted it and got on with it, or was there some resistance towards these measures? Definitely. It were very, very resistance of the people. <laughs> uh -huh. So, going forward, the album. Obviously, it was released back end of last year. I'm, I'm assuming you got really good feedback from people in Panama. 
And I, can, you... I can hear you. Sorry. Right. So, obviously, you released the album uh, back end of last year. What was the reception like from people in Panama? Was it really well received? Whoa, this is a very nice question and very good answer for that. Is the people here in Panama like this music? They shop albums every single day. <laughs> it's so good every single day the people shop the album and we need made more copies and we start to 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 make the people in all the world hear the music of Nastron. I don't know if you can understand me. But we need to put the music of Nostran in international way because he's in Panama. The people like the music and other people don't like the music. Oh, no, I'm be afraid. This guy is so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the world all over. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like everything every, everywhere. <laughs> the guy listens to metal. Uh, stay away from them. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the people is very good too with us here. I can't complain of that. <laughs> so what, what is the sort of the national attitude towards metal music? Is it um, supported by the government, or is it oh. is it opposed by the government? Well, the government here in Panama, they don't like too much the metal, <laughs> and uh, they don't they don't like black metal, dead metal, folk metal. Maybe they like the Latin music, but then other people like the music, rock and metal, and we are in this, in these places, in these boundaries with these people. Yeah. There was a festival. Yeah, the yeah, MUPA the festival. Uh, MUPA? Yeah, yeah, it's a MUPA Remember? festival. It's for, right. it's for the government people, yeah. But it's gone. It's, it's very nice. It's very nice for help the people, and the people need to know the rock and metal is good music, story music. Uh, then the kids need to start to grow with the good music in this world because the bad music is destroyed that and and the metal with history and mythical music like folk epic metal and history music is very nice it's like it's like a book it's like a power of book yeah we're teaching people yeah, we need teaching the people the good music. The the kids need to start to play drums. They play bass. They need to play guitars and singing. Good loud. or he can sing opera. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, opera and metal does exist. Yes, it does exist. Yeah. Now, obviously, you said the album was really well received in Panama. What about outside of Panama? Did you have coverage from outside of Panama? And have you sold any albums outside of Panama? Well, yes. We have sale albums in USA, in LA, California, and Denver, Colorado, too, and Costa Rica. And we have started to sail in Colombia in maybe a month or something. And well, right now, maybe sell the album in England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so how did you get into metal music? Who inspired you to get into metal music? Was it family or did you discover metal music on your own? Well, uh, in my own, uh, I started in metal by a friend. My family didn't like it, but I don't really care about it. <laughs> uh, we get in metal like when I was like 16 years old, maybe. Yes, it was by a friend and I started to like bands like Slipknot, uh, like Ozzy Osbourne, Not Bane, and I was getting to one day a friend come with me with a cradle of field, uh, uh, a city. So I put it and I love metal <laughs> since that day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in, in my way I start to hear music rock and rolling metal when I five years old for my cousin 
he's a tattoo artist and he tell me hey you can hear this band this band is called 311 man you can hear that it's like a rap or or funk music you know, from you say and after that i hear hypocrisy and another bands from metal and I start to learn music in nine years and yes i love that and destroy my guitars, boof, in my room, and all the stuff. Okay, and how did your family react to you actually playing this music, especially Nastrand metal? Well, my mom, my mom loves, and the mono of late till I know, she likes to. <laughs> she bought and, me a, a copy of the album. <laughs> yeah, the family supports, yeah, supports us. Excellent. Talking about the Panama metal scene itself in, in its entirety, obviously you've got a lot of metal bands there, but there appears to be very little way of a music industry, very little record labels, very little PR, booking, management, etc., is it most bands in Panama operate on a DIY basis? Label, label, <laughs> label, record label, uh, uh, record wow. labels. Here, the people is the more the most bands are independents. Uh, the record label, no, no, we're uh, independent here. Yeah. There are no, uh, not too many uh, labels that support metal in here. Yeah. Uh, we got Dead Soul Records, but uh, many of us are independent. Yeah. And does that go with the same with management, working companies, payouts? There's, aside from the bands, there's no industry for metal music? Well, here, well, here the stores, here in the stores, the people support us, sell the album, but but I don't know uh, the support of government. No, just the Mupa Festival. I don't know. I don't know more about. That. I don't know. It's later you can was, say something. It was a group uh, that we started like about six months ago. Uh, it was called Apareuchi. It was a musicians' movement to try to restore the, the, the music industry, but uh, it wasn't so good because, like I said, the government uh, is very tough in here. And, and there, there are many people that support us, but the government done too much. Now, you've released songs both in English and Spanish, which is easier no. for black metal? We, 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 we write songs in English and we read in albums, I'm sorry, we read in books and inspires in the history of different mythologies of the of the world. Yeah. Now, regarding Panama, um, have you had metal bands from overseas in different countries come and play Panama? So Costa Rica is next to Panama, if I'm correct. Yeah. Have you had bands from there come and play in Panama? Costa Rica and Panama, the people every every time play here and 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 there. The people from Panama like Costa Rica and the people from Costa Rica like Panama and we are neighbors and we share the music, we share this love for for the metal rock and this type of culture. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, but definitely uh Costa Rica have a major metal movement. Yeah, that's true. Panama. Yes, that's true. So there are uh, many bands that come overseas. Yes. To Costa Rica than to Panama. Very big concerts. Yeah. Of course, 
obviously in Europe we tend to look at a lot of metal bands across Europe, United States, Australia. Do you feel that it's now more than ever important for people in Europe to pay attention to bands from Central America? Because we've got these so many bands that are not being given attention to. So do you feel now is the time? Now is the time. Now is the time we need to work hard and we need made more music for all the people in the world and for 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 the all the type of people for help this world the people don't be afraid because we sing in cultural ways or that and don't speak about sorry the devil on that no 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 i speak about mythology history things for the human beings yeah it's time right now. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Talking about your second, your actual debut album, not the EP, but the, this proper album that has come out. For all the songs that you have done, which one is your favourite and why? Later. Well, uh, my favourite from the album is Ragnar, I guess. Uh, because uh, I recorded, I recorded it, and I think it 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 will like the people to to hear it because it has that power. Uh, the the breakdowns, it's very complete. Uh, maybe need for Venom too. I don't know, Kraken. Well, I love all the sounds because it's for for the brain of us and very 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 nice my, but my favorite is deep on hellheim because it's a very 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 complicated sound with with a little of grunge with a little of punk with a little of, of electric music folk it's good deep on hellheim is my favorite so in, in, in a way, the, the album is not what you call a traditional black metal album that everything is influenced by black metal. There's a whole melting pot of various genres within this album. Uh, the influence of black metal for us, well, I love Bornagar from Norway, Slavit from Norway, and Kalma from Finland, we have we have played with with day here in Panama, and I like Venom from England. It's for your country, and Satyricon from Norway. I think the the most we love, I think, is the music with history with with mythology, and this is the band. I think I don't know later. What do you say about you? Well, uh, I like Tear. That band, it's it's a great band. Um, I like uh, other folk uh, bands like uh, Corpiclani, maybe. Uh, uh, ah, I forget the, the name of that band. Uh, well, uh, I have uh, many, many bands that influence me. Like Kraken said, the grunge, uh, the grunge too, uh, the punk. We we try to 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 do a Mix little it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, most people in different backgrounds, where they go at different cultures at metal concerts, a lot of the fans shout out different things depending on where they are from the world. So are there certain things that fans at metal concerts in Panama tend to shout out to the bands? Are these all things that are said? Oof. I really can't hear you. Sorry. I, I can't hear the question. I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay. No. Yeah. So when you go to metal concerts in Panama, uh -huh. are there any sort of um, things that, fans would shout out at bands while the bands are like playing any sort of 
phrases in Spanish or uh, there are many uh, bad words. <laughs> <laughs> Those include I play mo, you know, uh, uh, long life metal. Uh, play another, another. Uh, I don't know. Kraken like to say that anything? Mm, no, it's nice. <laughs> It's good, yeah. and well, uh, the people say other. Oh, the people things. The people. The people say, "Oh, hell, Satan!" You and I say, "No, we don't play about Satan." Yeah, it's so <laughs> weird for us. Um, I don't know. It's it's good. It's good. I love it. I love it. I suppose the, the whole irony, though, is that people look at black metal bands as always being satanic. No. So. Um, so they look like, like that's a they look like, like a satanic music. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So to have like Nashrand cover basically, if you like, mythological black metal. Yeah. It's mythological. Is this is this it, something new? It's uh, it's like uh, about souls or monsters or entities for the forest, for the woods, for uh, another world's mythology. Pure mythology, pure mythology, and we about we speak about the human too because we in the third album have a new song about the the girls here in Panama. They lost, she lost in Boquete. It's a place here, and it's a very 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 horror story. And we we start to make music about that and about the conscience of human beings. We need made and be a more good human beings. So your, your your music is very connected to Panama culture and mythology. Yeah, and, and Nordic yeah. mythology. This first album is about the Nordic mythology, like Viking mythology. Yes. Would never have imagined Viking metal to be in Panama. Yes, the people say that. Oh, you're Viking or what? Oh, yeah, we are the tropical, tropical Viking. Viking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and we are not Vikings, but because we are not fighting in, in, in yeah, in Denmark in this place. No, we are here in Panama, and we love the mythology on all the places. <laughs> but the first, sorry, but the first album is about. Um, Nordic mythology. Yeah. It's different. It's different, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so looking forward, obviously we're now approaching March. What plans does Nastran have for the rest of the year? Well we are planning to, to get uh, more into the stage, you know. Uh, we have uh, a presentation on April seventeenth. Uh, we will share a stage with Cabeza de Martillo. It's uh, another Panamanian band, very good band. All the good band, uh, all the bands are good, uh, sorry. Um, we are still working in another songs. The song that Kraken told you about the two girls that get lost. Yes. It's very, uh, very... Uh, creepy. Creepy, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, when isn't maybe creepy? Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's creepier, I think, I think, because it was real. Yes, poor girl. Real story. So uh, we s we are planning to to get to Costa Rica, maybe to play. Yeah. Uh, I we are receiving invitations from from other countries. Uh, we wish that England. Invite us later someday. Yes. <laughs> Is somebody playing a game in the background? Because I can hear gaming noises in the background. Nice. <laughs> cool. So, Nash Strands, oh, very nice to be talking to you tonight. Very nice to talking to you guys. I can hear you, sorry, it's my earphone. Hello. Uh, very good talking with Nash Strand tonight. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank oh, you, sir. Oh, thank you. 
It's a pleasure thank for you, us. Thank you. De nada. You're welcome. What? Can you repeat it? De nada. Oh. De nada. All right. Maybe I need to speak a little bit of Spanish. Ah, okay. Muchas gracias a todos por tenernos aquí. A Nastran Pty desde Panamá para Inglaterra. Gracias a Riz, que de verdad es un gran apoyo para la banda y para Thank mover you, nuestra música en todo el mundo de Inglaterra. Los amamos. Hails. <laughs> Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Inglaterra. Cheers, guys. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Thank bro. Thank you. Ah, Balboa. Cheers, yep, bro. Yep, yep. Ooh.